Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today. To always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give him the thanks right now. Another day to always give him the praise right now. Another day to always give him the glory right now. Another day to always worship his name right now. Another day to always magnify his name right now. Another day to always exalt his holy name right now. Because he is king of kings and he is lord of lords. He is still on the throne. Glory, hallelujah. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. He is still taking care of people right now the day business. He is still asking prayers business right now because he is Jesus. There's nothing he can't do and there's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing too difficult for him. So when you call on the name Jesus, it's so much power in that name and a lot of y'all don't even realize that it's so much power in the name of Jesus. It's power in his name. His name can move mountains. His name make the enemies tremble. His names make the devil get mad. It's all about his name. So that's why praise is such an everyday thing. Because when you praise his name and you worship his name, you are, not, you are making the enemy mad. Right now, I want my brothers and my sisters right now to open up your mouth and praise his name like you never praise his name. See, praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing because our God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. That's why praise is what I do because he still stays the same no matter what. The word of God tells us in Hebrews 13 verse 5 that he will never leave us nor will he ever, ever, ever forsake us. They mean that God got you. Tell yourself right now today, say, self, I don't know what's going on right now. I might not understand what's happening right now. But Jesus, I know that you got me because your word tells me that you'll never leave me or forsake me. He got you. He will never disappoint you and he'll never fail you because he never failed and he never lost. He got you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, coming for you peacefully and humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for everything that you've done. I thank you for everything that you're doing. I thank you, Heavenly Father God, how you're moving in our life. I just thank you, Father God, that you allow myself, my brothers, my sisters today to come together today, God, to fellowship in your house today, to praise your name in your house today, to glorify your name in your house today, and to and exalt your name in your house today. Father God, your house is a house of prayer and praise. God, right now, we are praying in your house, we are praising your house, and we're about to have service in your house. Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground, on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved and the house that cannot be shaken. The house that cannot be bothered at all. So, Father God, we give you the thanks, we give you the praise, we give you the glory right now today in your holy, precious, mighty name. Father God, your word also tells us in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19. Glory, hallelujah. But two or more gathering in your name. Thank you, Jesus. There you are in the midst of things. So, Heavenly Father God, I know. I know for a fact and I know for a certain Jesus that you're in the midst of our homes right now, that you're in the midst of our television sets right now, that you're in the midst of our telephones right now, our laptops right now, our desktops right now, our iPad right now, or whatever gadget we have or whatever gadget we use it. God, we know that you're in the midst of it. Father God, you have your way with us right now today, God. Father God, we came in for a reason today. We came in for a purpose today. And God, we ain't leaving your house. I said, God, we ain't leaving your house until we live with full and satisfied. Oh, Father God, we know, Father God, that you're about to show up. Oh, God, we know that you're about to show out. Oh, Father God, we're so excited for this word today. We're so excited for this anointing message today. Oh, God, we know that your word is about to speak to us right now. Father God, we know that we're about to be healed today. Father God, we know we're about to be blessed today. Father God, we know we're about to be favored today by your word right now today, God. Father God, we thank you for your presence that's around us right now. We thank you for your love that's around us right now. Father God, you know every last one I need, you know every last one I concerns. So God, we cast all our problems, all our, our anxieties, all our troubles onto you right now today, Jesus, because your word tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 to cast everything onto you, Jesus, because you care. Absolutely. I said, you care for us, Jesus. And God, we want to let you know that we're in love with you. 
God, we're here today. We want to let you know that we trust you. Father God, we're here today to let you know that we're going to continue to pick up our crosses and continue to follow you. I cast every demonic stronghold spirit that came against my brothers and my sisters in that life today shall be destroyed and determined and be terminated by the fire of Jesus Christ right now. Holy Spirit, I need you to move through my brothers right now. Holy Spirit, I need you to move through my sisters right now. Holy Spirit, I need you to touch them right now. Holy Spirit, I need you to do something in their life like they ain't never felt before. Right now today, Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move the fish skills from their eyes so they can see everything what God wants them to see. Holy Spirit, remove the earplugs from their ears so they can hear God softly today. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the angels that are surrounding us right now today. Father God, we're here today to let you know that we are available for praise. We are available for service. We are available for the kingdom. We are available right now today for us to continue to do our Father's will. We are available for our assignment. We are available for our mission. And we are available for our task. We are available, God, what you have put in our heart and what you told us and chose us to do. Father God, we lift the present to you right now today. We give you the thanks right now. We give you the praise right now. In Jesus' holy mighty name, let the church come together and say, Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And that's why I can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 That's why I praise you the way I do. That's why I glorify you the way I do. That's why I put my heart into you every day, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. In Jesus' mighty name. And if y'all ready for this word, say, Jesus, I'm ready for the word. But I want to let you know right now today, I can't thank you enough. Normally, I keep continuing to go on with praise, but this word is for somebody today. This message is for somebody today. And we're talking about today, your season two is coming. Season two is coming sooner than what you think. But in season one, is some things that we had to go through. In season one, we had to check ourselves. In season one, we noticed people that talked about us. In season one, we had people to discredit our name. In season one, we had people to spread lies and rumors about us. In season one, it was something that we was doing wrong in our life. In season one, it was something that we was doing wrong in our marriage. In season one, it was something that we was doing wrong in our walk with Jesus. That's why things didn't happen the way that they happened in season one. But in season two, season two is going to be the show enough, real deal, holy field. Season two. It's coming because you are in God's hand. Season one, yes, we had people to deceive us. Season one, yes, we had people walk in our life. Season one, we thought people who was our friend but really was not our friend. In season one, we went through a dark spot, a dark place in our life. In season one, we even got separated with our wives and husbands, and we was all alone. In season one, we went through the worst trial. The worst tribulation. In season one, we went through a lot of pain. In season one, we went through a lot of suffering. In season one, we went through a lot of hardship. In season one, we went through a lot of backlash. And we wonder why we was going through what we was going through. See, you had to go through that in season one so Jesus can get you ready and prepared for season two. Good God Almighty. We had to go through that in season one so Jesus can get us ready and prepared for season two. Because it's going to be a season two. And your season two is around the corner. Your season two is on the way. Your season two is in the mail. Your season two is through DHL right now. Your season two, two is in FedEx right now. Your season two is with UPS right now. Your season two is coming. See, a, de a delay does not mean it's denied. That means that God is getting getting you ready for season two. See, right now, a lot of us right now, our blessing has been delayed. But God is telling me to tell you right now today, because it was delayed does not mean, hallelujah, that it was denied. 
See, we're still waiting on God to reveal it to us. And God saying, season two, I'm going to reveal everything to you. And the word of God tells us in our box, he said, once I reveal it, he said, it won't be a second or a minute late. Right now, you're about to enter into your second season. Yes, I know season one made us feel uncomfortable. Season one, really, we was not ourselves. Season one, we had to go through the worst of the times to get to the best. See, when you're going through something, see, God said you got to go through something so he can take you out of something so he can lead you to something. Are you following me what I'm saying? You had to go through the valley for you in order for you to get to the top of the mountain. See, in the valley, that's when everything's at the lowest low. See, in season one, we was at our lowest low. Even ourself. And I had to ask myself, say, self, what is it that I'm doing wrong? And self say, LT, it's time for you to get yourself together. You're not being the man that you need to be. Why do you think God did not open that door for you? Because you was not ready. You thought that you was ready, but you really was not ready. So I asked myself, I said, self, what is it do I need to do? And self say, son, it's time for you to get some things together. It's time for you to get your house in order. It's time for you to be the man, be the leader, be the alpha. But God has prepared and told you who you were. So after I noticed that, I said, okay, self, now I know what I got to do. And once I started noticing what I had to do, I started noticing certain things. I started noticing how God was starting to prepare me. I started noticing how God was getting me stronger. I started noticing how God was getting me wiser. I started noticing how God started revealing things to me when I didn't even know that it was even there. God said it was there the whole time, but you had the fish scales on your eyes, LT, so I had to remove it. You had the earplug in your ear, so I had to take it out so you can hear me softly. And clearly, I say, God, I can hear you right now. I say, God, I can see everything what you wanted me to see. So I had to go through the worst of the worst in season one. Yes, people talked about me in season one. Yes, people deceived, deceived me in season one. Yes, I got separated from my wife in season one. Yes, I was in the valley in season one. Yes, I went through a dog spell in season one. Yes, I went through the worst of the pain. Yes, I was suffering in season one. Yes, I was struggling in season one. But one thing in season one I did not do, I did not lose my faith. And I did not lose my commitment, my dedication to Jesus. That's one thing I did not do in season one. I still have my faith. I still have my trust. I was still committed. I was still dedicated. And I was still put on my cross and still following Jesus. It was the other things that I had to get with myself first. It was other things I had to check myself. And sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, we got to start checking ourselves. Because most of the time, it's something that we are doing when things are not happening. Amen? We're going to read from three Bible scriptures today. My brothers my sisters, I want y'all to write every last three, write them down. Because this is going to be talking to you. The first one we're going to read from is the Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. And if you haven't, let the church say amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. There's a time for everything and a season. Why don't you look at that? Two things he's telling you. He said there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. There was a time in season one that you was not yourself, my brother, my sister. There was a time in season one that people talked about you. There was a time in season one that people deceived you. There was a time in season one that you was going down the wrong track, the wrong path. There was a time in season one you thought people were your friend, but they really not your friend. There was a time in season one that you had to go through the worst of the pain, the worst of the suffering, the worst of the hardship. There was a time in season one who you thought was down with you 
but never down with you. There was a time in season one, you wonder why God was not opening doors. There was a time in season one, you, re you realized that you were not receiving your blessing. And God said in season one, you was not ready. In season one, it was a thing that you need to check with yourself. In season one, it was some things that I need to see more of you, but you was not there. So God said, what kind of father would I have been in season one to bless you with those type of blessings when it would never done you no good in the first place? Season one, God know who talked about you. Season one, God know who walked out of your life. In season one, God know who deceived you. In season one, God know who mocked you. In season one, God know who put you down. In season one, God know that you went through a divorce. In season one, God know you went through a separation. In season one, God know that you was in the valley. In season one, God know that you was in the wilderness. In season one, God know that you was facing pain and suffering and hardship and all that. He knew all of it. Because he was right there in the midst with you in season one. And he's still going to be right with you in season two. Because your season two is about to come. See, your season one has, oh, help me with this, Jesus. Your season one has already expired. And a lot of you right now today, you don't even realize that your season one has expired. Now tell yourself, say, I know all the pain and the suffering and the struggle I went through. In this last season, say, I know season one is over and season one has expired. So I know I got to be coming to my new season. Yes, you are, my brothers. Yes, you are, my sister. Your season one has expired, but your season two is about to come because you are in God's hand. So that's a time for everything in the season. There's a time that you had to go through that. It was a time that you had to face that. It was a time that you had to check yourself. It was a time that you needed to start spending more time with Jesus on a regular basis. It was a time that Jesus needed some alone time with you. He didn't want to be bothered with your husband. He didn't want to be bothered with your wife. He didn't want to be bothered with the kids. and all. He wanted one-on-one -on -one with you. Not with Facebook, not with Instagram, not with Periscope, not with YouTube. He wanted one-on-one -on -one time with you. That was what you needed in season one so you can get close to him. So you continue to pick up your cross and follow him during the pain, during this pandemic that's going on. Jesus was your only hope. Jesus was your only resources. Jesus was your only guide and direction. So yes, you had to go through that in season one. But God says it's a time, it's a season that this new time is about to come. But this new season is about to, it's about to erupt and it's called season two. And you better walk right into it. Yes, you are. He is leading you right now today to season two because your season one has expired. Amen? Your season one has expired. All right, let's read Psalms 91. The first one was, the first one was Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. And the second one is Psalms 91. And we're going to read verse 1. That's Psalms 91. And we're going to read verse 1. And if you have it, let the church say amen. Amen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Mm. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Right now, you should be at peace with yourself. You should be at rest with yourself. Because your season one has expired and you about to come into season two because you in what? You is in God's hand. And when you're in God's hand, you know that God is going to take care of you. When you're in God's hand, you know God's going to be there for you. When you're in God's hand, you know God will never leave you or forsake you. When you're in God's hand, you're protected. When you're in God's hand, you got to know that everything's going to work all right. Right now, before you go to sleep. Right now, what it be doing right now today, you got to say, I should be at peace right now. And you should be at rest right now. You should be comfortable with yourself right now. Because season one has expired. And season two is about to come. Season two is about to erupt. Because why? You are in Jesus' hand. And when you're in Jesus' hand, you should be able to sleep 
peacefully. You shouldn't have to worry about nothing no more. You shouldn't have to be stressed out no more. You should be walking around with a smile on your face. You should be overwhelmed with joy, overwhelmed with laughter, overwhelmed with oh, help me, Jesus, overwhelmed with comfort. And you should be saying, I can't thank you. I just can't thank you. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, because good God Almighty today, sisters and brothers, you are in the best hands. And his name is Jesus. I don't care what I got going on. As long as I'm in Jesus' hand, I know, I know by the word of God that Mr. LT is going to be okay. I know the day, my sisters. I know the day, my brothers. As long, good God Almighty, that you are in Jesus' hand, that you are okay. When you go to sleep tonight, you should sleep peacefully. When God wake up in the morning, you should have a smile on your face to ready to go in your prayer closet and pray and worship him and spend some time with him. And you come out of that closet, you need to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus and open your Bible and read a word. And when you get done reading that word, you need to ask the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, what's next? Your servant is listening. That's what I mean by you being rest assured in the best hands because Jesus has the best hands of them all. There's no other hands that is like Jesus. There's no other hand can do what Jesus' hands can do. There's no other hand that is lovable, that's merciful, and that is awesome, good God Almighty, like Jesus. Come on, somebody. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You are in the best hands right now today. You shouldn't be worried about nothing. And I know that the enemy is trying to distract you. I know that the enemy is trying to put all kind of negative thoughts in your head. But you got to say, not today. It's not going to happen. I rebuke you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Because I am in the best of hands right now. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to read Isaiah 60 verse 22. That's Isaiah 60 verse 22 we read from ecclesiastes 3 and 1 we also read from psalms 91 verse 1 and now we're about to read on that last one isaiah 60 verse 22 and if you have it let the church say amen hallelujah thank you jesus the least of you will become a thousand the smallest, a mighty nation. I am the Lord, and this time I will do this swiftly. God said, when the time is right, he's going to make it happen for you. When the time is right, he said he's going to move swiftly. He said he's going to take his time. He said he's going to move like no caterpillar. He didn't say he's going to move like a snail. He said when the time is right, he said he's going to move swiftly. Because why? Because you are entering into your season number two. Because why? you in God's hand. You had to go through season one first. For God can enter to you, enter to season two. You had to go through some things. You had to see some things. You had to witness some things. You had to get stronger at some things. You had to get wise at some things. Because there's some things that you went that you went through is some things that you had to face. Is some things that you had to, to, to accomplish in season one. For you order for you to see season two. Right now, Jesus said the time is right for his sons. The time is right for his daughter. Tell somebody right now today, I know I'm about to enter into my second season. I know what I had to go through in my first season, but this second season is going to be amazing. This second season is going to be a shock. This second season, God is about to show up and he's about to show out. In this second season, you can't even fathom what God is about to do in your life. In this second season right now today, if Jesus right now today was to tell you what he's about to do in your life, some of you right now today, that you will cuss them out. You will say, Jesus, there's no way that you better do this. There's no way this is going to happen for me. There's no way that you're going to do this for me. But he said, I'm going to do it for you because I know who you are. Yes, I'm going to bless you upon blessing. Yes, I'm going to open up the floodgates of heaven and I'm going to pour a blessing on you, a huge blessing on you that you can better receive it all, that you got to give some away. God said, your blessing going to be so good, you're going to have to donate some of them to, to donate to, some, to somebody. Right now, God had people 
people building vineyards for you right now. He got people building houses for you right now. He got people got you're going to hook up with business deals right now. He got the right connection, the right resources right now. He got the right partners. He got the right sponsors. He got the right of everything because this is your second season and you better come into it because why my sisters, why my brothers? Because you are in Jesus' hands. And when you're in Jesus' hands, it's going to be all right. You ain't got to think about it. You ain't got to stress about it. Glory and hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited for my second season. I deserve it. You deserve it, my sisters. You deserve it, my brothers, for everything that you had to go through, everything that you had to face, everything that you had to counter. And my special verse for our close is James, chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. What the word of God says, he said, consider it pure joy. When you go through trials and tribulations. So you had to go through that trial and tribulation in season one. Because in, in verse four, it says, because your faith is being tested for the perseverance. That you are not lacking anything that you what that you what? That you'll be mature. Right now, Jesus, we know that you're mature right now. See, your perseverance guided you and led you to the victory line. Victory is yours. Tell yourself, say, victory is mine, and I'm going to pick my crown up, and I'm going to put that crown on top of my head. Because I know season two is mine. You got to tell yourself right now today that season two is yours. You got to claim it. You got to walk like it's yours. You got to praise like it's yours. You got to worship like it's yours. You got to dance. You got to cut a rug right now today, my sisters and brothers, like it's yours. Because I know by the, by the name of Jesus that season two is mine. I claim it right now. I receive it right now. I step my name and approve it right now. I thank you in advance for season two. I thank you for the blessing. I thank you for the breakthrough. I thank you for the miracle. I thank you for the open doors. I thank you for the opportunity. I thank you, Father God, that you're about to open the floodgates of heaven. And, Father God, that you're going to make it do what you do, Father God. I thank you for the endorsement. I thank you for the sponsors. I thank you for the connection. I thank you for the resources. I thank you for the rain. I thank you, Father God, that we're about to head to the other side. I thank you, Father God, for the sunshine of my sisters and my brothers and even my life because we are entering in season two because why? We are in Jesus' hand. And if, and if you know, and if you really, really know that season two is yours, give God some thanks and praise and glory for it right now today. Say thank you, Jesus, because season two is coming because I know I'm in Jesus' hand. And yes, it is, my sisters. Yes, it is, my brothers. Season two is coming. Get ready. Jesus is about to show out. Amen. Amen. And if this word is for you, give God some thanks and praise and glory for it right now today. Can, can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today, by us praying a simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always worship him. Always trust him. And say thank you, Jesus, because I am walking into my season two. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep you on in prayer, my brothers and sisters. I just ask y'all guys to continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. This serving ministry LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name. Yes, we are entering and we are coming in to our season two. Glory, hallelujah. Amen, amen. We thank you for it in advance, Jesus. Amen.